Hello, hello everybody, it's Regina. I hope that you guys had a wonderful weekend, a great Memorial Day, and that you are well rested and that you enjoy that extra time off. You know, that always comes in handy. Um, I wanted to come on here and kind of discuss a topic. Um, I was preparing something else, but the Holy Spirit just kind of whispered this in my ear. So I'm gonna talk about this a little bit and uh, we're gonna set the record straight about this topic, um, about the marriage bed being undefiled, okay? This scripture in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 4, um, 4 to about 6, or maybe just 4, because this is, the, this is the scripture that everybody likes to take and just run with it, okay? It says, marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and the sexually immoral, okay? That's the NIV version. Let me read it again. The scripture says, marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and the sexually immoral. Let's look at the Amplified because I love the Amplified and how it uh, words things. I love to read the Amplified version. So let's see what the Amplified says. Uh, Amplified says, marriage is to be held in an honor among all that is regarded as something of great value and the marriage bed undefiled by immorality or any sexual sin any sexual sin for god will judge the sexuality the sexually immoral and the adulterous okay so i don't know how many times um I have like ran through Facebook posts and things like that. And you know, there'll be a topic at hand that somebody's discussing and people always run to the defense by saying, uh, the marriage bed is undefiled. The marriage bed is undefiled. You know, they always just take that, that one little part, those few words and they run with it. Okay. But we are going to delve into the marriage bed truly being undefiled. Okay. Does that mean that because you're husband and wife that you can do any and everything in your bedroom because you are married? Ouch. Ouch. Come on. I know I just stepped on some toes. I know this is going to be uncomfortable. But let me tell you, that does not mean that, okay? That scripture does not mean that because you're married, you're free to do any and everything in your bedroom, okay? Because there is still a standard. There is still a, a standard of holiness. There is still a standard of righteousness, even in the sheets, even in the bedroom, okay? Now, let me remind you all, that you are talking to somebody who has walked down a process of being delivered from perversion. The Holy Spirit had to clean me up um, because of things that happened to me as a child and in my childhood and things like that. So you ain't talking to nobody, ain't, ain't did nothing, nobody that don't know nothing, okay? But even in your bedroom with your spouse, what you are offering up in intimacy and in sex and romance and all that good stuff, it should still be pleasing unto the Lord, okay? Like the Lord created intimacy. He created sex. He created the act of being able to procreate and reproduce, okay? So it's beautiful in the eyesight of the Lord when the husband and wife comes together with one another. But I have, I have seen and I know people, I know leaders, okay? I know leaders who were teaching uh, younger married couples that it was okay to um, engage in pornography in the bedroom with each other. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No, ma'am, no, sir. No, that right there is an example of defiling the bedroom. Defiling the bedroom. When you do that, when you do that and you open yourself up and your spouse up to those spirits, oh my. I mean, you might as well get ready for everything that's going to come with it, okay? You can open your spouse up to a spirit of lust. And I'm sure if you're engaging in pornography, like lust is a given, that's going to come with it, okay? Because you're entertaining a demonic appetite. That's demonic in nature, 
okay? You're, you're taking into your spirit that which is unclean, the sexually immoral that the scripture talks about, okay? Like we shouldn't need to watch anybody else doing porn in order for us to be able to perform with our spouses. Come on, just say ouch. Just say ouch with me. Come on, we gonna dig into this. We gonna keep it real. We are gonna keep it real around these parts on this channel. We are gonna learn how to live holy. Okay, like this flesh, the Bible says in this flesh dwells no good thing. Okay, and we fool ourselves. We uh, we feed ourselves our own self-created doctrine. Okay, and the enemy starts whispering in our ear and telling us that things are okay. Oh, the Lord created sex. It's beautiful. That's okay. Y'all gonna indulge in a little pornography because you're husband and wife. And the Bible says that the marriage bed is undefiled. Come on, y'all. But that is not what that scripture means. And so many people are don't even realize that they are uh, in sin in their marriage and in their bedroom because they are partaking in things such as this. Come on, you have to protect your spirit, man. You have to protect the spirit of your spouse. Don't put that junk in front of your spouse. Come on. And if you are doing it and you did not know, I admonish you today to stop. I admonish you, okay, to stop, to put that away because you are creating a monster. If we have to protect our eye gates and our ear gates and we have to watch what we feel, to watch what goes on the inside of us, why will we sit down or lay down, you know, with our spouses and partake in pornography? Mm-mm, 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 no, 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 no. No, you are jacking yourself up. You are creating an appetite in your spouse that after a while, you won't be able to quench, okay? He won't be able to quench because you are filling yourself up with so much filth, so much filth. I remember when I was in like middle school and I'll never forget this because they were encouraging. I will never forget this, okay? These demonic agendas, even that go on in the school, you know, in health class and things like that, they were encouraging us. You know how they used to pass out the tampons and things like that? You know, when we're coming into age and coming into our bodies and things, and they were encouraging us to explore our bodies in school. Explore our bodies, okay? And you're talking to somebody, a little girl that had been molested and violated, you know, so I already had a seed of perversion that was planted. Y'all ain't talking to me. You're not talking to me. So all I needed was to hear somebody say, oh, you can explore your body, that's okay. That's fine. That's normal. Play with yourself. Your hormones are natural. Come on. That's why we even got to teach our children the right way. I have a teenage boy who's 16. I have one who's 13. And I have set them both down already and told them we do not masturbate. We do not watch pornography. Those things are displeasing in the eyesight of the Lord. Okay. I'm very off topic. But that was free. Okay. So. You have to really guard yourself, okay? Even in society and societal pressures and stuff because they'll tell you that it's okay. But I remember, that not the last video I did, the video before that, the prophetic word that I released. And part of that prophetic word, the Lord says that we should judge things according to righteousness and according to the word of God, okay? Lust is going to set you, I mean, not lust, pornography is going to set you down a path of not being able to control yourself, not being in control of your, your cravings, okay? Sending you out. Lust is almost uh, untamable, unsatiable, like it's never satisfied. Okay, so once you tap into things like that, you're going to want more and more and more. And before you know it, you're going to need to be on the altar in the deliverance ministry to, uh, needing to be set free from all that that you have opened yourself up to. So, yes, yes, we are not believing that lie that the marriage bed cannot be defiled because it can be. It can be just because we're married does not give us the green light to do any and everything in our bedrooms. Okay. No, like, and we don't do, you should not be bringing any of the partners into your covenant with your husband and wife. 
talking about the marriage bed is undefiled. You are defiling your bed. If you are doing those things, you're defiling your bed. We don't do threesomes. The Lord said a husband and a wife, not a third party in addition to. Come on now. No, no. No, we don't do that. We don't do that. You guys, so I want to, uh, I want to be real. And I want people to know and, and be able to look at scripture and to be able to properly study the word of God and put things in its proper place. Not just take a chunk out and make it fit to what we want to fit. Because you know, we can be good at that and we can deceive ourselves. Why the, the devil is on the back end deceiving us as well. You know, there are that's a lot of things that can defile your marriage bed. A lot of things. Music. You know, music is a whole other beast. You know, I'm not talking about all music and I'm not that stiff where, you know, if I'm out with my husband slow dancing or something where, you know, I won't like a good love song and stuff. But all that raunchy stuff, y'all, that stuff can be just as bad as pornography and things like that. You have to filter. There has to be a line at some point that we draw. Okay? And we have to be aware because the enemy is cunning. He's cunning. And he will deceive you. And the next thing you know, you're trying to figure out why you are craving other men. And probably women too. Because lust has no boundaries. It has no boundaries. And husbands, you probably trying to figure out why you are not satisfied with your wife. And you may be craving men because lust has no boundaries. Come on, come on, come on, come on up in here. Come on. We're going to talk about it. We are going to talk about it. And we're going to pull back the layers. And we're going to be 100. I'm going to be 100 with you. And I'm going to let you know. These are the topics that they don't talk about in church. This is the stuff that they don't deal with. Okay. These are the things that nobody wants to tap into. And guess what? Like, it's just, I, I couldn't believe it. The, the, the past, they were pastors that were encouraging younger married couples to engage in pornographic activity. Watch porn. That'll help turn you on. That'll turn your wife on. Craziness craziness so guard your heart come on now guard your eye gates guard your ear gates this stuff will mess you up spiritually and have you trying to figure out what is wrong with me like i'm horny all the time yes that's because you have picked up a lust spirit by the things that you were ingesting in your spirit by way of pornography by way of allowing third parties into your bedroom and any other crap that's going on bestiality and all that crazy stuff that stuff is demonic and it's disgusting lust has no boundaries so it is so important it is so important that we protect ourselves y'all that we protect our minds even when our minds wander off we have to put our flesh in subjection okay we all know when we get to the point like okay my flesh is just whoo come on now that's when we need to push them plates back that's when we need to be in the presence of God. That's when we need to get out the cell phones. That's when we need to turn the TV off. And we need to give before the Lord and like, Lord, help me. Help me to help myself. Help me to crucify my flesh. Help me to die daily. Okay, and what are we dying to? We're dying to our will. We're dying to our appetites. Okay, not that natural food. Our, our, our fleshly appetites. Okay, some of that stuff that God has already freed us from that the enemy would love for us to go back into. That's what we're dying from. That's what we're dying from. We're, we want to sanctify ourselves. Okay? So God bless you all. I just wanted to, to give that to you. I want to drop that on you because I don't want nobody going to hell because you think that you can do anything in your bedroom just because you're married. The devil is a lie. My five-year-old say, the devil the lie. The devil is a lie. <laughs> so you all be blessed. And um, I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Or you can inbox me on um, my Regina Pugh page, Singer Psalm, and send me a message. Um, you can always reach out. You can email me. I will put the email in the link below. 
but don't let nobody fool you, okay? And don't fool yourself. Don't lie to yourself and tell yourself, there's nothing wrong with these things. We're married. We're <laughs> Yeah, and after a while, you're going to be divorced because y'all ain't going to be able to keep it under one roof, right? And somebody's going to get offended. Somebody's going to be mad because you can't stop cheating and you can't stop desiring other women and he can't stop desiring. Just a whole mess. And they're trying to figure out how did we get here? Protect your marriage. Protect your covenant. It's precious. It's too precious to allow all that outside demonic lustful pressure. Okay? Keep it pure. All right? I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.